This is Geometry, Chapter 8, Section 4, in which we will be studying trigonometry. All trigonometry is, is triangle measurement. What we use in trigonometry are things called trigonometric ratios. They're just the ratios of the sides of a right triangle. Later we'll be using trig where it's not a right triangle, but for now we're strictly focusing on right triangle trig. There's three main ratios that we use, sine, cosine, and tangent. <clears throat> the sine ratio, which is abbreviated SIM, but it's still pronounced sine, sine of angle A is equal to the opposite leg from A over the hypotenuse. We're talking this angle A down here, so from here this leg is the opposite leg, and then the hypotenuse is obviously the one across from the right angle. Cosine of A, which is abbreviated COS, but still pronounced cosine. Cosine is the adjacent leg over the hypotenuse. And then tangent, which is abbreviated TAN, but still pronounced tangent, is opposite leg over adjacent leg. Mathematicians have come up with kind of a mnemonic, a memory trick to help you remember the ratios. And they use the name of a uh, fictitious Cherokee Indian chief. I'm part Cherokee, so I get to claim him. Sokatoa, sine opposite to hypotenuse, cosine adjacent to hypotenuse, tangent opposite to adjacent. If you can remember Sokatoa, then you can remember the ratios. If you can't remember Sokotoa, then you'll have to find another way to remember them. <clears throat> so they're going to ask us to find trig ratios written both as a fraction and as a decimal. Sine of Q is our first one, so we're targeting this angle at Q. <clears throat> From Q we're looking for opposite and hypotenuse. So that would be 24 over 26, which reduces to 12 thirteenths, and then my calculator tells me that that's 0 0.923 is a decimal. Cosine of Q, cosine is adjacent to hypotenuse. So that would be 10 to 26. <laughs> which reduces to 5 thirteenths, which gives me a decimal, 0 0.385. Tangent would be the opposite over the adjacent. So 24 over 10, which reduces to 12 fifths, or 2.4 as a decimal. Sine of R, notice we're switching angles now, so opposites and adjacents are switching. From R, the opposite is 10, the adjacent is 26, or excuse me, the hypotenuse is 26. That reduces and we still get a decimal. Cosine of R is adjacent to hypotenuse, so it's 24 to 26, which reduces down and gives us a decimal. And then finally, tangent of R, opposite to adjacent, 10 over 24 is 5 twelfths, which is 0.417. Okay. You probably notice that sine, <clears throat> sine of Q and cosine of R are the same value. Cosine of Q and sine of R are the same value. I can't get away with that with the tangents. But cosine of one angle will be the same as sine of the other angle if it's a right triangle. Now, we use these trig ratios to find missing information in a triangle. So they've given me here a side of 18 and an angle of 25. And I'm supposed to find this side x over here. 
if I had the hypotenuse, I could use the Pythagorean theorem, but since I don't have that, I can't use Pythagorean. But that's where trig comes into play. The question you need to ask yourself is, what do I have and what do I need? And that tells you which ratio to use. From this angle, I have the adjacent. I need the opposite. So I'm looking for the ratio that involves opposite and adjacent. It's not this one. It's not this one. Ah, OA. Opposite to adjacent. So I'm looking for tangent. Well, my calculator will tell me what tangent 25 is. Be aware if you're using the graphing calculators in my room there, you'll have to be careful because the calculus class uses those and they use them in radians. You want to be in degrees. If you uh, have trouble with that, just ask me and I'll show you how to fix it and how to check to make sure you're in the right measurement. But you want to work in degrees. Now all we have to do is multiply by 18 and we get the missing side. Uh, something else to be aware of, if you round a little different, you'll get a little bit different answer down here. As long as you're in the right neighborhood, I'm not going to argue too much about it. If you gave me an answer like 9 point something, that's going to tip me off that there's a problem. But somewhere around 8.4 would be good. Let's look at the second one here. We have a 75 degree angle. From this angle, we have adjacent, and we need hypotenuse. Adjacent to hypotenuse looks like a job for cosine. Now, cosine of 75, we can get a value for out of our calculator. We need to get the y by itself, so first we need to multiply it over to the other side, and then divide. And we find out that this side is almost 58. <clears throat> we can also use the ratios if we want to find the angles in a triangle. To do that, we need to use the inverse trig function. Now, usually this is going to be found on a second or a shift with the trig button. And I'll show you where that is on your calculator if you need help with that. And in just a second here, you'll see the symbol that you're looking for. So our job here is to find the measure of angle A. Well, the same question still works. What do we have? And what do we need? We need this angle. From here, we have opposite, and we have adjacent. That sounds like a job for tangent. So tan is 6 over 20, tangent A, 6 over 20, which is 0.3. I'm looking for a button on my calculator that will give me the symbol for tangent inverse. Looks like tan to the negative one. It'll probably be shift tangent. And you should get an answer around 16.7. Okay, let's try another one. We're still looking for angle A. Based on angle A, we've got the opposite and the hypotenuse. Opposite to hypotenuse is sine. Sine of A equals 3 over 15, which reduces decimals 0.2. So we need the inverse sine of 0.2. So you should get an answer around 11 and a half, depending on how you rounded. One of the things that they're going to throw at us, they're going to ask us to solve a triangle. When they're asking us to solve a triangle, our job is to find everything that we weren't given. So we need to find, ultimately we need to know the lengths of all three sides and the measure of all three angles. Okay. We have two sides and one angle. So our job is to find one more side and two more angles. I'm going to go after the third side first because it's easy to get. It's Pythagorean Theorem. So we'll plug in the 5 and the 13 to the Pythagorean Theorem. We'll work through the arithmetic. 
and we'll find out the third side is 13.928. Now all we need is two more angles. Well, let's find one of the angles. I'm going to pick on angle F. No particular reason, just that's the one I chose. From angle F, what information do I have? Opposite and adjacent. Well, opposite over adjacent is tangent, so tangent f equals 5 thirteenths, turned into a decimal. Now I need to do the inverse tangent of that value, and I find that angle f is 21 degrees and change. Again, your mileage may vary. You might be a little bit different number here, depending on whether you left the whole number in the calculator or whatever. Again, neighborhood rule is in effect. So now we've got angle F, we need angle G. Well, to get angle G, we could do another trig ratio if we wanted to, but we could also work a lot smarter. We know the three angles have to add up to 180. We know a 90 degree angle. Now we know a 21 and change degree angle. So if we subtract out from 180, we get our third angle. Let's do one more where we're solving the triangle. This time they've given me two angles and one side, so I need to find two more sides and one more angle. Now since I have two angles, let's do that first. Find the third angle, same way we just did, subtract from 180. And we know the third angle is 57. Okay. Now, I can use the 33, or I can use the 57. And I'm going to choose the 57 to make my arithmetic a little easier. From here, I'm looking for opposite, and I have adjacent. Well, tangent of 57, my calculator gives me a value. Multiply by 16, and I've got my length for QR. Now that I've got QR, I could do another trig ratio, but I prefer Pythagorean theorem, so that's what I'm going to use. Plug in the two sides we know, do some arithmetic, collect up terms, and then take a square root, and we get our third side. Okay. Had we used trig, we would have gotten roughly this answer again, maybe a little bit of variation to it, but the neighborhood rule is still good. Okay. The key thing is to remind yourself the question, what do you have and what do you need? And those two things will lead you to which ratio you need to use. If you had questions along the way, especially calculator issues, hopefully you made note of that, bring it in to ask, and we will see you in class.